All right, so now that we have um, our lists established, the next thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to start um, with operations on those lists. So things like uh, adding a, a bunch of numbers together. Well, there's kind of two ways that we saw that. One was just if we had a list of numbers that we knew uh, and we wanted to add together a certain number of them, um, then that was just a, a fairly straightforward uh, process. And here, uh, in Python, we could do the same thing. So if we have a list of numbers, uh, let's say the first odd um, integers like this, then we can just add those together using NumPy with uh, a sum, and we get 16. However, what we were more interested in was, uh, or at least also interested in, were symbolic representations of things like this. Like, what do we, what does it look like for any number of odd integers to be added together? What's a symbolic expression for that that I can then use and substitute into? So we can actually use this really cool library called SymPy um, to solve problems like that on the computer. The thing is, is that we, you know, we need to recognize I'm not looking for a numerical solution now. I'm going to be doing a symbolic uh, problem. So I'm going to have to declare things as, as symbols if I use SymPy. Um, and if I want to go back to using them as, as numbers, I've got to use, change it back to NumPy kind of things. Um, so to begin, I'm going to add some odd integers together. All right, And I'm going to add some number i. Uh, of them. Okay, so um, I need to declare i a symbol, and I'll do that with uh, psi.symbol, and now I can use this thing i. So I can psi, SymPy has a summation, and I'm basically going to add together, right? Um, this is 2 times 0 plus 1, this is 2 times 1 plus 1, this is 2 times 2 plus 1, 2 times 3, plus 1, right? We, that's how we saw we could represent odd integers. So I'm going to add together 2 times i uh, plus 1 for i from, we said from 0, this is from 0 to uh, 3, right? So, and we see we get 16. We get the same thing. But what's even more powerful is that I don't have to use a finite value here. I can use a numeric uh, or a sim symbolic expression for the upper bound and get a formula for this. So let me actually also create a symbol called n. And then what I can do is I'll just repeat this, except for now I want to, um, instead of stopping at 3, I'm going to go to some ver number n. And actually, oh, okay, I get an expression for this. And if I want, I can actually get it to print that nicely uh, with the pprint function. And it looks like it's n squared plus 2n plus 1. So in other words, if I wanted to add together the first 10 odd integers, well, then the result would be 10 squared plus 2 times 10 plus 1. And that's pretty cool. So, um, so something else that we might do is we might combine this with a loop where we change um, what we're doing in here. Uh, we saw that maybe what we would want to do is find something like um, the sum for just i. Um, we would maybe want to see, then we looked at it for i squared, and then we looked at it for i cubed, right? And so maybe what we could do is we could just print out a whole bunch of these. So let's print it out for the first 10 um, integers. So we can use our loop for i in range uh, 9, right? And then we'll just say, Psi p print. Uh, actually, I don't want to use i um, for num in range. I will say uh, we're going to sum i to that power. 
and then we get a big list of summations here. So, um, yeah, just a, an important thing to be able to use is, uh, is this summation operation because that's how we were getting a lot of the formulas that we were then using to plug in to our sums.